Hi everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. We're getting near March Madness along with the small handsome. We have Cody Zeller who's <laughs> the big handsome in Indiana. The one and only Jeff Colfack. I am nearly Dom Izzo. We are three weeks away from the start of the fun of March Madness and boy we'll have our own madness in Fargo, Jeffrey on Thursday night as we'll I think we'll find out who's going to be the Summit League champion at the end of this week. Western Illinois will make the Dakotas trip starting Thursday with the Bison and then Saturday with South Dakota State. As we tape this right now, Western Illinois is a half game up on the Jacks and the Bison. And this is the road trip we've been looking forward to all season to see how good this Western Illinois team really is. Interesting, this Western Illinois team. When NDSU first joined the Summit, um, as you know, they were almost a doormat. Not yeah. a very good team. I remember covering a couple games of Nacomb when there was like 55 people in the gym. <laughs> you could hear the basketball you know, <laughs> echoing throughout the whole building at Waste Management Court. Uh, you know, Steve Molinari has done a great job, as we just saw him there. He's uh, the coach that used to be at the Gophers, yep. so there's some familiarity with him. He's brought a strong defensive style. And he's got that guy. He's got that guy. And he's just a little bit bigger and better than you are. <laughs> he's really, really good. And he's done that to defenses all season long. He torched the Bison uh, three times. They have a six-year player in Ciola Clark. And this is a revenge game for NDSU, Jeff. The Bison were up seven at Macomb. Uh, back last month, and Western came back and won that game. I expect another game in the 50s because that's just the way Western Illinois loves to play. And NDSU can play in that game better and just as good as anybody else, mm -hmm. too. Their defensive uh, play of late has just been outstanding. There are some lapses maybe in the Oakland game on the road that led to a, you know, a loss there, but uh, to hold IPFW like they have, and, you know, and that's... Uh, Maybe it's going to be 38-36 <laughs> this game. We don't know. Uh, well, it's going to be interesting, though, that uh, you may say it's just the regular season. Well, I think it does make a difference. Yeah. I think it's semi-important important in this respect. The no, number one or number two seed gets a first or gets a Saturday game Correct. in the Summit League tournament, and, and therefore Sunday. Sunday. Yep. I think NDSU is a team that's had trouble throwing three days uh, together, especially on the road. Now, the Summit's a neutral court. Yeah. I get that. But maybe South Dakota State may be uh, more of a road game for them. But Oof. if NDSU can get that Saturday game, I think their chances of getting to the NCAA tournament um, increase. South Dakota State beat Western Illinois in Macomb first time around. And they're playing, I think, the best of all three of the teams right now, despite the fact they lost Saturday uh, at Oakland. You've got Nick Walters, who went for 53 uh, on Thursday against IPFW. They lost at Oakland, but the Jacks have won 28 in a row at home. They're impossible to beat down there, and that's going to be really hard for Western, considering how that game might go Thursday night in Fargo. Well, they're impossible because of Nate Wolters. Yeah. I mean, that guard is... Uh, you know, we have a good point guard like that who can control the, uh, the tempo yep. and control a lot of things and can score almost at will when he has to. It makes a huge difference. It's interesting to see how this race will shake out here down the final three weeks of the regular season. Uh, South Dakota State, as I mentioned, playing pretty well. How big was the win for NDSU on Saturday to get that one at Fort Wayne, considering they had the lead, a four-point lead at Oakland, and saw the Grizzlies come back and, and steal that one on Thursday night? Well, I think we said this two weeks ago, or almost three weeks ago, when Taylor Braun got hurt. Yeah. I think the formula for NDSU, and I said this back then, was if you can split on the road and sweep at home, I think you have a good chance of the number one or number two seed. I think that's still holding court. Four and three is their record right now without Taylor Braun. They, they hoped the final 12 games of the regular season to get him back uh, by the time the Summit League tournament started. So that was 12 games. They played seven. They have five more to go. They're four and three. But those three losses are on the road. That's including true. Including the first two right after yeah, he got hurt. the Jackson Western. Timing. Correct. And those are the top two teams, obviously, uh, in the Summit League as we get set down the stretch run. Now, obviously, since the last time we've been in the studio, uh, there's been some comings and goings in the Summit League and ones that really... Uh, shake our heads. I think a lot of other people are shaking your heads about yeah. it as well. And that was a decision by Missouri, Kansas City to lead the Summit League and go to the WAC. And now, and I detailed it last night on the Ramblings, it's not your dad's WAC. It's not even your uncle's WAC. It's not even your brother's WAC because it's not Nevada and Boise State and Fresno State. This is Cal State Bakersfield and Grand Canyon University and Utah Valley. You've had a couple days to process it. Does it still make any sense? It makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is it's probably an easier road to get an NCAA tournament I burden. totally agree with that. I, I think that's probably it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe on the letterhead here, they showed, <laughs> you know, Boise State, and like I said in my column, they, they use the old letterhead. Yeah. It's, it, it's the Great West. It's kind of the Great West, uh, you know, minus a couple of teams, or uh, maybe the Tim Miles' is United Basketball League. <laughs> well, the know. funny thing is, if you look at those schools, if the Summit League were to call a Chicago State 
or a Utah Valley, and they wanted Utah Valley, I know, a couple years ago, that's when Southern Utah was still in the league, they would, go, they would come to the Summit League in a heartbeat. They would leave the WAG. And it's, I, I guess if you want to equate it to like a, a professional trade, the Summit League traded Denver for Kansas City. And I think, they may, have, I think they may have made out better just considering uh, Denver's success as of late. They're playing uh, pretty well this, pat, this, this current season. In Kansas City, they haven't won a tournament game since 2007 in so men's basketball. It'll still leave the summit, I believe, at 19. That's correct next for next year, season. Correct? Yep. Now maybe is it time for the summit to look back at Chicago State and say, I know it's not well, the best program, and maybe it doesn't fit in some respects, yep. but geographically, well, it's right down the road from the conference office, correct. by the way. Yeah. So uh, may maybe that's a possibility, and especially for baseball, because baseball yeah, is now down hurting. to six teams. Yep. And that is the minimum number for NCAA qualification. Correct. Now, if Oakland were to leave the horizon, that would leave baseball at five. Time to dial 911. <laughs> and I think Chicago State is probably, I, I think you got to swallow a little bit of pride and say, you got to take them. Now, I hear you. I also threw out Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois can offer you, they, they used to be a member of the Summit League before they left for the, or they used to be a member of the MidCon before mm -hmm. they left for the uh, Ohio Valley. They can offer you, then you can basically have the entire state of Illinois covered in basketball and also if they decide to go down that road the Missouri Valley can offer them in football now granted they Patty Verrill would probably want an even number they're at 10 now they would want to get to 12 so I'm not sure who you would get as your as your 12th member but I think East Illinois is definitely a possibility as well to say let's go get them they're located in Charleston and that would uh, in football Jeff you'd have Illinois State Western Illinois Southern Illinois and Eastern you have the whole state covered basically if you get them in football it's a great uh, concept and if they're confident the summit will not disband I, I think right. they're right because NDSU and SDSU are maybe still sitting there down the road at some point from Missouri, Missouri Valley, Valley. Yeah. Uh, but you know you speak about the the, the baseball what about UND for affiliate That's membership to the WAC? Well, that just broke before we taped this about 15 minutes ago that the University of North Dakota will join the Western Athletic Conference for baseball only starting next year. And I know that at least NDSU is pushing hard to get UND into the league, just travel partner-wise and cutting budget costs. And UND would probably want that as well, but that didn't happen. Now they go into a league that, as we mentioned, the teams in it, there's only a couple different teams in the WAC in baseball. Uh, Northern Colorado and Which Sac would have been State. a good summit team, too, by the way, for Correct. affiliate. Uh, both of those schools that UND plays in in baseball, uh, Texas Pan Am, Utah Valley, Seattle, uh, are, the, are the ones. But, boy, travel budgets will be huge for UND making those trips. Uh, I, <laughs> I know. It just doesn't make <laughs> Who's sense. Who's going to raise the money? I, I don't, don't know. Maybe, you know. I don't know. I, it made too much sense, I guess, to make it happen in baseball, didn't it? Why not? I, I don't get it. I, maybe, and, maybe a good reporter ought to look into that. And that, Well, that, here you go. Maybe That's someone I, can work on that. But if you're Todd Brown, how nervous are you right now considering all the rumors surrounding Oakland and it's, you know, wanting to get into the horizon? They've made it no bones about it. They want the horizon. The horizon hasn't reciprocated that as of yet. I think he was nervous last year before yeah. Oral Roberts left. So Correct. I think he's probably doubly nervous today. The only good thing, NDSU is currently favored, preseason favored in two polls to win the baseball conference and get the automatic bid uh, into the NCAA tournament. Before we go, Roger Kish's wrestling team uh, picked up a fourth win in the league. We were at the match on Friday night, which is a great one against Utah Valley. They came back to win and then beat Northern Colorado to clinch a share of the Western Wrestling Conference for the first time in its Division I history. Nice step for uh, Roger. I think mm -hmm. he's got the program on the right track. I think he's getting the right recruits. Uh, still in the developmental stages, I think, of where he wants to be. Because uh, in wrestling, you know, it's all about the uh, postseason Correct. tournament and how many All-Americans you can get and how high of a finish in the NCAA. That being said, some of the rankings they've gotten was Stephen Monk now number six yeah. wrestler in the country Sprinkle. at 165. Sprinkle winning his 100th match. I think that's um, a very good step for this program. Some big steps, and we'll see what happens next month because that's the real thing. They have not had a Division One All-American yet, and you know the great tradition of Bison mm -hmm. wrestling. Uh, that's the one, that's the thing that they want to get uh, up there in the, uh, in the wrestling room come this time next year is have an All-American. Yep, and uh, I think Stephen Monk's uh, uh, your best bet. I think Sprinkle's got a good shot. Max Stahl, I think, maybe has an outside shot. Yeah. And, you know, and there, it's, a, it's a program, I think, uh, we'll see where the younger kids come, but, uh, you know, they, they, they've signed some um, pretty good classes here in the last couple We'll see. One football note before we go. CoachingSearch.com, one of your favorite websites, reporting that Sacramento State offensive line coach Connor Riley will be uh, joining the NDSU staff. That's, uh, I'm assuming, to replace the opening that Tim Polisic created there. The connection there, uh, Jeffrey, he's from Omaha, uh, played some college football in Nebraska, Omaha, of course, before they uh, 
a fold of the program. So obviously there's Nebraska connections there, which NDSU did the last time around when they hired Steve Standard. Nice recruiting connection too Absolutely. with the uh, Omaha um, area and Nebraska. I remember Connor Riley when he played at Nebraska Omaha as the big stud offensive lineman. Yeah. So you know, and fullback, and I assume he'll be the fullback tight ends coach. Right. That's basically a blocking position in the Bison offense, mm -hmm. and I, I see that as a decent fit. Also, one note, I mentioned this if you missed it last night. Uh, the Western Carolina game now moved to 2016. The Iowa game has moved back a couple weeks to September the 17th, so get your long-range planning uh, out there. But NDSU obviously still has one more date to fill uh, for 2013. That's not going to be an FBS school, so we can throw that out right now. Uh, but they're probably going to pay quite a bit of money to get a team to come here like they did last year with Prairie View. You know, and those teams, the longer you wait, the, the more you pay. And Absolutely. That's just the market value these And uh, it's also, it's, it's, it's hard to get a team. Gene Taylor was in, our, uh, in the studios last year and how hard it was to get a team to come to Fargo. They paid Prairie View over 200 so how's your back after shoveling it's pretty good Ooh. it's 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 chirping at me right now so we look in the back i know a lot it's, of white it's, there. it's everything it's covered the city right now we got a great week of coverage coming up starting on thursday western illinois and ndsu a battle for first in the summit league jeff and i will be there to cover it and that's the latest edition everyone of the bison video blog